Ethiopia rallies to the call of a crusade spurred by the news of the fall of her holy city of Aksum. These pictures just received from Ethiopia and the war zone show priests and native followers of the Coptic Christian Church bearing aloft the ancient cross typical of their faith, inflaming the warriors with the religious fervor of the crusade. Emperor Haile Selassie, the conquering lion of Judah, with his small son standing by his side, receives in person the homage of his fighting tribesmen. Undismayed by the reported desertion of some of his chieftains, the King of Kings does not let his faith rest solely upon the allegiance of his feudal retainers, but on the more modern implements of war, his European trained soldiers. the Italian armies advancing from Eritrea bring up their heavy artillery. And the Pathé News cameraman at the front shows you the captors of Ottawa and Aksu. While the combat troops write home stories of their conquests, stories reminiscent of the days of Imperial Rome, the Italian engineers build roads into Ethiopia. And bridges, just as the legions of Scipio Africanus paved the way for those who came behind them. And here is the triumph of Italy's modern Scipio Africanus, the white-bearded General De Bono and Count Ciano, Mussolini's son-in-law, who led the air attack on Ottawa. Like the ancient Romans, they rely on native allies. Here are the savage Ascari who led the Italian advance, shouting, On to Addis Ababa! Emperor Haile Selassie waits upon his throne, the Lion of Judah at bay. While in Rome, Mussolini faces a more dangerous threat, the aroused British Lion. At the Suez Canal, England's warships prepare for action. In Little Malta on the Mediterranean, the British men of war lie grimly in the harbor ready to strike for king and country. London gives the word. Ramsay MacDonald, broken in health by his fight for peace, voices Britain's decision, which may plunge Europe into war. I think we showed the harness racing on the ice. Now that winter is over, we take you down south to Seminole Park. Here, trotters and pacers are in training for the coming season. Lee is essential to a champion harness horse. Also, good manners. He must not break into a gallop. Although women rarely try this competition, a few have driven in sensationally fast times. Rather easily, like this fellow, but it won't hurt him. Thoroughbred racing is the sport of kings, but harness racing is the favorite sport of American businessmen and farmers. Daytona Beach, Florida. Sir Malcolm Campbell's Bluebird streaks to a new record. Thundering back over the beach at nearly five miles a minute. The end of the run. Look at those tires. The casings are torn to shreds, literally burned away by the heat of terrific friction. And just imagine what would have happened if the tire had blown out. And here's Sir Malcolm, the king of speed, with his smiling wife. Miami built more pool, Coral Gables, Florida. Bathing beauty stage a rodeo on seahorses, barrel-bellied bucking broncos, and it's a case of ride em, cowboy. Like world champions as the St. Louis card get in trim at Bradenton, Florida. And now manager Frankie Frisch sets the pace by batting out a few. Down it! Back a tough one! Al Dean, happy to you fans, winds up and uncorks some sizzlers. He hopes to win 20 games this year. If he does, he'll be a big help to Big Brother Dizzy, 
who now shows what the Dean family has in store for Babe Ruth. Fans all over the country are asking if the cards can repeat. But the boys act as if there were no doubt about it. They claim another championship is in the bag. Oh,